This is the USA Say, eight minutes with an Army aviation subject matter expert. Let's fly with the topic, the Aviation Tactics Transformation Initiative. CD5, Casey Peterson, the Army Aviation Survivability Branch Chief at DOTD. CW4, Daniel York, uh, ATIC Development Lead for DES. CW4, Travis Haney, AMSO Course Manager. CW4, Chris Crawford, AMS Training Developer, Survivability Branch, DOTD. What is the Aviation Tactics Transformation Initiative and how did it come about? Uh, Mr. Crawford, the Aviation Tactics Transformation Initiative is Army Aviation's effort to increase tactical focus and competency in our aviators, and increase readiness for large-scale combat operations while capitalizing on existing counterinsurgency operational expertise. This really began in 2015 uh, when strategic studies caused us to focus on near-peer and peer adversaries and the capabilities that they had developed. Uh, this led the Army Aviation Survivability Development and Tactics, or ASDAT, team to write the first ever classified Army Aviation Survivability Guide. This guide has since evolved into the classified TC3-04.2 Aviation Combat Survivability and Tactics Manual and formed the doctrinal foundation of our beginnings in tactics testing and validations. This process we call a quick reaction test or QRT. We've done several of these quick reaction tests to develop what we currently call our 28 and 2900 series ATM tasks and are in the early stages of forming the next QRT. How has this work impacted how we fight and what changes are being made to current professional military education and functional courses? Uh, Mr. Crawford, this has changed the entire paradigm of how we fight and led to focus on flying low and tactically. In order to accomplish this, our air crews must have a graduate level understanding of the threats we faced, how we understand and articulate tactical risk, and the manner in which we conduct mission planning to mitigate those risks. We have been reshaping our professional military education to include classified training on threat, survivability, and tactics. The latest example of this is the Aviation Warfighter Skills Course, or AWS, which is replacing the Aviation Warrant Officer Advanced Course. AWS focuses on warrant officers earlier in their career progression in order to train them at the classified level for mission planning, threat scenarios, survivability, and tactics. The shaping of our PME earlier in the warrant officer career helps build a strong foundation rooted in tactics for which to grow once they get ready to track. AWS and unit trainer evaluator programs will help to greatly enhance our lethality and survivability in future operational environments. Episode one of the USACE 8 was about the unit trainer evaluator. Can you tell us where we are today on this effort? CW4 York, program is in its sixth iteration, and in the last three unit visits, we have produced 10 AMSO UTEs. We are really seeing momentum built in the units as they realize what a force multiplier these trainers are providing them. The UT program is critical to allow us to transform the current IPC into a more tactics-focused course. ATIC, Aviation Tactics Instructor Course, is what the future lies for us. You mentioned that AMSO is working hand-in-hand -hand with the IPs. What does this future relationship look like, and how are we changing our functional course to match? Mr. York, so currently we're working with a 110th Aviation Brigade in the redesign of the IPC, calling it the Aviation Tactics Instructor Course, with the primary focus being on threat, threat development, um, and the ability to fight the aircraft. Over the years, we've seen uh, the instructor pilot course guys leaving here with basic 1000 series and 2000 series tasks. We've added in uh, the Apache course some mission focused tasks in there where they're going out there in their training scenario. But we're looking at a complete shift on how the aviators go through the course. So they would arrive here and then from there uh, they would focus on UTE validation. And after UTE validation, they would shift to mission focused leaving here with a, a wealth of knowledge. What changes are occurring in the AMSO course as part of this initiative? Mr. Haney, during the transition from the TAC Ops Officer to the Aviation Mission Survivability Officer, the AMSO course has undergone several changes. This was to produce AMSO as mentally focused and physically capable to operate in large-scale combat operations. Earlier changes introduced fundamentals of instruction from the Instructor Pilot course, as well as individual simulator series teaching methods of instruction focused on 28-2900 series tasks. To enable the AMSO to better understand threats, we have also included more threat identification and analysis through development of standardized baseball card development and student briefings. Most recently, we have introduced a block of instruction on tactical risk assessment utilizing a tactical risk assessment worksheet, which enables the AMSO to provide a quantifiable measurement of loss or emission loss rate to the commander for combat aviation operations. 
This process is based on understanding survivability from Dr. Robert Ball's textbook, The Fundamentals of Aircraft Combat Survivability Analysis and Design, identifying and understanding the threat and the threat's capabilities and limitations, identifying our own assessed planning advantages and risk mitigations, as well as identifying internal and external enabler assets through fuse mission planning process. Today's AMSO provides a critical component in the mission planning process by thoroughly understanding the threat, aviation mission planning, and tactics, and identifying ways to reduce tactical risk to aviation operations, resulting in a more survivable and lethal aviation fighting force. It sounds like there are a lot of things changing for the better for Army Aviation and our survivability officers. Mr. Peterson. Uh, yes, uh, there is a lot of things going on here, and there is an unprecedented amount of collaboration going on between all the team members here at USACI. Uh, it's important for everyone to understand there are really two basic principles when it comes to change. First, when we look at tactics development, we must have a standard. But it's also important to note that in tactics, that change is a standard. Unlike the VMC approach, which has been consistent since the Wright brothers first landed the Kitty Hawk, we must constantly adapt to our adversaries. Secondly, as we make these changes to our PME and functional courses, we need to understand that nothing happens overnight. Uh, we're working hard to push these changes through, but there is a process to get it done correctly, and we are following it. Many may look at this as the stuff that happens behind the curtain here at USACI, but it's important to note that the field has a very key role in this. Uh, we often hear just apply TTPs to a given situation, but we need to speak intelligently. And what is the difference between a tactic, a technique, and procedure? A tactic is defined as the way in which our adversaries employ their forces. Techniques are what the force develops to counter the tactics as they encounter them. They should attempt to refine these techniques, but ultimately they must send it back to USACI to be a scientifically and validated procedure. This ensures that there is a standard and that it is based on empirical data. These validated procedures are then written into our doctrine, and we can assume that soon after this happens, our adversaries will change their tactics, thus starting the process all over again. We acknowledge that the force will be the first to encounter change and have to react to that, and that is why spreading tactical knowledge across our formations is so important. This doesn't lessen what one particular track brings to the fight. It enhances it. Our AMSOs have been the voice of change from the very beginning in Army Aviation Tactics Transformation. But we need to step it up and continue to be adaptive for the foreseeable future. Thank you for listening to this episode of the USACE 8. Please note that this episode was produced based off feedback from the field. You can send episode requests to army.usace.8 at army.mil.